Hi, this is Stuart Bruce, and I'm going to give a short lecture on Advanced Spatial Analyst Least Cost Path Analysis. As we mentioned before in the previous uh, exercises, Spatial Analyst has many possibilities of things that we can do. Uh, this particular exercise is really focused on what's the least cost path from points A to B. Our goal is to show you uh, the basic functionality to do this least cost path analysis. Um, we're also going to reintroduce the use of Model Builder uh, when you do complex um, tools like this. Model Builder helps you uh, process the information and also allows you to change variables and easily rerun the analysis. There's actually many applications for least cost path analysis. Um, one scenario might be to minimize construction costs for routing a new highway between two cities. Um, you definitely want to avoid high slope areas, uh, protected wildlife areas, and unsuitable land uses. Um, one of the big examples when it comes to highway construction is actually trying to avoid archaeological sites. Um, when I was younger, I actually had a, a job I was working on in Pennsylvania uh, with the Pennsylvania Historic Museum Commission. And they were really interested in this particular application because if you know where all the archaeological sites and historic sites are, you can use that in the planning of a new highway to actually avoid those. And if you avoid them, you're just going to save a lot of money. Uh, for example, you don't want to plan a highway through a cemetery because you'd have to move the entire cemetery. So there's a lot of applications. Now in the exercise, we're, we're going to be working on looking at deer migration path. But just to give you an idea of uh, a different scenario that you could use least cost path on. Now, in some ways, least cost path is, is similar to some of the functions you use for site suitability. Um, in many cases, you want to avoid high sloops or slopes. You want to avoid unsuitable land uses. Um, stay away from polluted areas. Uh, maybe you want to avoid areas with high crime. But you assign the cost and you do the model for the least cost path. Basically, you determine the variables and how to set those variables for the different data sets that you bring in to use for the analysis. So the overall strategy you're going to use is, you know, once you determine what your input rasters will be, of course you may have to convert some of your vector layers to raster, but you're going to reclassify those and then combine them to reflect the cost of travel over the surface. Then you're going to use the cost weighted distance and direction tools to determine the cost from the source. And then the final step then is you will perform the shortest path analysis to the destination location. So we use the same process that we did in site suitability. Um, you'll reclassify, uh, weigh, and combine the data sets to reflect the landscape, and especially the cost. You use a common scale for all of your different layers. And then basically you'll add those together to come up with your total travel cost raster. So the cost weighted distance and direction tool, you know, basically calculates the distance raster from the um, source. And you can see this in that little diagram here. And then it also calculates a directional raster roadmap for the least cost direction for each cell back to the source. So this actually heavily influences the determination of the final travel path. Your result product then is basically a uh, raster line from your source. In this case, the source is in the upper part of York County. The destination is in the lower part. Uh, one interesting thing that uh, we've discovered, uh, this lesson was actually written um, four or five years ago uh, using RTS 9. And you, what you're going to find is that the result that you get when you process is actually a slightly different path. So something changed in either how the software processes it or one of my inputs changed a little bit to adjust the path. But basically, at least cost path um, in this case, for deer migration, would not have you run through the city of York. So you're going to go south of the city or north of the city. And you'll see that when you complete the lab exercise. So the process that you use to do this, um, basically these are key techniques that you're going to use to solve these complex problems. You have to have some understanding of the situation and what the different input layers that you use to calculate costs, how they would actually affect the cost for the item that you're studying for travel. Um, and you can really great generate some really great products uh, out of this. So I have a rather extensive lab exercise demo that's a little bit longer than the previous ones. Uh, the use of Model Builder adds a little bit of complexity to the lesson, 
Um, but it's actually relatively complicated, yet simple at the same time. So I encourage you to uh, watch the lab demo, um, potentially prior to you doing the exercise. But as always, if you get stuck on a part, you can go find that part in the lab demo. And uh, perhaps the lab demo that I recorded will be of assistance to you. So have fun with the exercise and have a great day.